Welcome to Corn Wagon Quilt Company. We are a brick and mortar quilt shop as well as an online quilt shop located in Springville, Utah. And we're filming today from our classroom. It's a wonderful state-of-the-art facility where we teach classes and have events. And you can always hop on our website and see what's coming up on our online calendar. Today, I have with me Mary Ann. She is our wool manager here at the shop. It's something we're especially proud of at the Corn Wagon. We have a beautiful department full of hand-dyed felted wools, and they're hand dyed by Marianne, um, and we have a wonderful selection of wool applique samples and of course kits. And today Marianne is going to show you the basics of wool applique, so if you've always wanted to try it, today is your chance to learn her tips and tricks. It's very easy and you're going to have so much fun. Come on up Marianne. Hi, I'm Marianne from Corn Wagon, and I'm here today to do a little demo on wool applique. We've been doing wool here in the shop for about 20 years, so it's been a fun experience to work with wool and all the projects that you can do with wool. It's so easy and it's fun to do. It's not as hard as other um, quilting projects, and so we love doing wool here at Corn Wagon. I'm just going to start by showing you how I trace my patterns and how I stitch. What I, what I used to do is always use some freezer paper and then I would get a pencil. I like to use a pencil that is just a mechanical pencil because the regular ones kind of wear down and they're not quite as sharp. You can trace onto freezer paper with your pattern, but if you do it and then you fuse or you iron this to your wool, you'll find that you either have to pin or you have to glue it down so you can get it in the right placement. So what I found doing wool for all these years is that I really enjoy using a fusible called Soft Fuse. This is a piece of Soft Fuse right here. You can buy it in a package like this. This will what, what is what the label will look like. Or you can also buy it on a big roll by the yard. Either works really nicely. Here's my piece of Soft Fuse again. And you can use a light box like I have here, or you will find that often you can see through the paper to draw it just perfectly without the light box. So I'm going to put the soft fuse over my motif, so my pattern, and with the pencil, I'm just going to draw out each of the patterns. Each designer will do it a little bit differently. Some of them have a placement guide, and other designers um, we'll just have the total pattern and then you have to draw from that. So it kind of depends on which designer you're working with. You'll also find that each designer, they choose to do the stitches a little differently or they may use a fusible or they may not use a fusible. So before getting started with your project, always look on the pattern and see if all of the motifs are reversed. If they are reversed, then you can use a fusible, and when you draw them out and then reverse them, they will be right. They'll be on the right side. If you don't, if the pattern maker hasn't done that, then you need to reverse the motifs. If you have a symmetrical design, it doesn't really matter, but if you have lettering or if you want the sheep to go this way rather than that way, then it will make a difference. So look on the pattern where it says that all of the designs are reversed. And then you can use your fusible just fine. So I've drawn out a couple of patterns from this little design that I'm doing right here. And they're just little chickens. What I like to do is just roughly cut out the, the soft fuse. Then I match up the little design that I have drawn out with the piece of wool, with the appropriate piece of wool. So this little piece right here that I've drawn these flowers on, here's the piece that I'm going to use with it. And the little centers are going to be here on this wool and the star on this piece. And then I use a hot iron with lots of steam. I found that the soft fuse works the best with steam and with high heat. 
and then I don't leave it on there very long, you'll find that you can burn wool and it can scorch very easily. And so you don't want to leave your hot iron on there very long. You'll notice that I also like to just trim it if I find that my piece of fusible is just a little bit too big. I'm going to trim it so I don't get the fusible stuck to the ironing board because then it kind of makes a mess. And then it just takes a few seconds to fuse these to the soft fuse. And you can hear that I'm using some of the steam. So there's my little wings and there's my star fused to the piece of wool. I'm going to do these other little pieces really quickly too. And then I can cut them out. Here's my star. What I have found is that some scissors work much better with wool applique than other scissors. This is a pair of Karen K. Buckley scissors. They're the medium size and they have a blue handle, but they have a little micro serrated edge to them. And that helps just grab the wool so nicely. If you use a regular pair of scissors, you'll find that they kind of slip back and don't cut the wool very easily. But these little micro serrated edge scissors really do a beautiful job. I'm working on a little project here it's a fun little quirky design by Annie Downs of Hatched and Patched. She's an Australian designer. And so I showed you how I've, I've, I've ironed on my little pieces to my wool. Then I cut them out. And then as I get ready to place them on my background, you may have a linen background like this. You may have a wool background or a cotton background. All of those work beautifully with wool projects. But this one here is a little linen background. And I have kind of drawn a placement guide on this one so I know where to place things. But once you have your little pieces cut out and ready to iron onto the back, then what you're going to do is remove the paper because this is just there so you can trace off the pattern. And then what is what stays on the wool, on the back of the wool, is a soft fuse, and that's what's going to glue it to your background. So I'm gonna place each of these little pieces where I need them. And this might take a little bit of time. On some patterns, there will be a placement guide, and you can actually use that to place your pieces. But on other patterns, they will just tell you to look at the picture on the front of the pattern. So you might have to kind of use your imagination. I like mine to be just a little bit different than everybody else's, so I'm not too worried about getting it in the very perfect place. I'm gonna to go to another little project that I'm doing. It's a buttermilk basin with a little snowman, and I'm gonna show you how I iron everything down. And what I've done is I have fusible on the back of each of these pieces and I've placed them just like I want them. I want to put my iron down on this without putting too much pressure because one um, thing that people don't like about using a fusible is that it tends to smash the wool and so it's not quite as three dimensional. But if you use a lot of steam and you don't press too hard, the steam will adhere it to your background just fine. So it only takes a few seconds. Don't hold your iron on there for a long time. And you can see while I'm doing this that I'm moving it quickly, using lots of steam. And they adhere just wonderfully. So that's why you want to have them just in the right place because it is a little bit hard to move them once they get ironed down. Now I'm ready to stitch. Once in a while you'll find that a piece of wool while you're stitching tends to come off. So I like to keep a little glue stick in my box that I'm working with. Um, I prefer the ones that are white, not the purple ones, but you can just buy any kind of glue stick. So this little nose fell off, so I'm just going to put some glue on here and glue it right back on. And the glue works really nicely as a temporary solution if you happen to lose something or forget to put a piece on as you're um, doing your project. 
So the next step in this will be to stitch, but I'm going to move it over again to my little project. Um, it's Flying Pigs from Annie Downs. So I've got my little pigs on here that I'm starting to stitch. And I'm just gonna show you how I attach my pieces of wool to the background. Some people like to do a little blanket stitch around everything, but I find that a whip stitch is a lot easier. It's a lot faster and gives me a little bit cleaner look. So I'm going to just demonstrate how I do a whip stitch. I like to find a, a piece that matches the color that I'm stitching on. Um, another thing I really enjoy using is wool floss. Here's a little bobbin of wool flosses. There's different brands you can use. Um, these are our fill brand. There's also a Sue Spargo brand that, that is very similar. But I use a wool floss to do my, all of my applique. This we wound onto bobbins, so it's just a nice little convenient set that I can take with me while I'm traveling. I've matched the color on this little blue bucket right here that I'm going to stitch this on and just demonstrate the whip stitch. I've come up into my wool about an eighth of an inch and then I'm going to take my needle off the edge of the wool into the background and then back up into the wool. So my stitches will be about an, in an eighth of an inch deep into the wool and about an eighth of an inch apart. And I want my stitches to come straight off the edge. It doesn't always happen with wool. You'll find that wool um, can't be perfect. And so that's another good thing about wool. It's, it doesn't always come out perfectly like you can with cotton because it moves around just a little bit. But when you get done, it looks beautiful no matter what. On the back, your stitches will be diagonal and on the front, your stitches will come straight off the edge. So I'll just do one more little whip stitch here to show you how I attach these. This little piece of wool has a little bit more of a texture, but you can barely see my stitches. They, the wool just tends to blend right into the wool fabric, and so you hardly see it at all. You could use cotton, but cotton has a sheen to it, and so you'll see your stitches if you use a cotton thread. The next thing, after I have everything stitched down, some simple projects, you may not do any kind of embellishment, but once in a while, we'll have an embellishment on the project. Here in the snowman's holding a little broom right here, and I'm going to put some little lines on this broom so it looks more like a broom. And when I add any kind of embellished like that on top of the wool, I like to use a heavier thread. A pearl cotton works really nicely. And like I mentioned, if you're using a cotton thread, the sheen will make it show up a lot more. So anything on top of the wool or vines or stems or things like that, we want to show up so we want to use a cotton thread. We could also use a silk thread, a shiny thread, but these are more the embellishment threads. This thread right here is a Valdani, and it comes in some beautiful muted colors. And it comes in a size 12 and a size 8. These right here are a Sue Spargo brand. This is a size 5. These colors are often a little bit brighter, and they have just a little bit more of a sheen to them, and they work beautifully on wool. On my wool and on my pearl cotton, I like to do a quilter's knot at the end because if you're using a wool background or a linen background, sometimes your fabric is just a little bit more loosely woven and so you need a bigger knot in your thread so it doesn't pull all the way through. So on this little broom right here, I'm going to do some little stitches that make it look more like a broom. I'll do them quickly, but you can see how the cotton lays on top of the wool and makes it more visible. So using a wool thread on that wouldn't give you enough dimension. 
I also wanted to just show you some other products that I use. I might want to make some little lines that guide me, that tell me where I want to put my extra stitches. And I'm using a friction pen. It marks on the wool, especially the light wool, and then when you put an iron on it, then it disappears. So they really are nice to have on hand for marking anything, especially things that you're doing for embellishment. They come in different colors, so you can have a pink one here that might mark on some things a little bit better than the black. I also like to keep a chalk pencil. You can either get a mechanical one or one like this. And if you're working on a dark background, and the chalk pencil is really helpful to mark placement or to mark any detail that you're going to stitch. You may want to have a permanent pen, but um, I haven't used them quite as much as, as these, which I use regularly when I'm doing my wool applique. The wool background was a little bit lightweight, and sometimes that happens just depending on the wool. So I've actually backed it with a fusible interfacing and the one we like to use here at the shop is called SF101. If you have a heavier background, like this other one that I was doing that has the linen background, I don't feel that it's lightweight enough that it needs uh, backing on it. But this one, it did seem to need a little bit more stability, so I have ironed on this iron-on interfacing on that one. You'll also find a lot of other fun threads. Here's some metallic threads. Um, we have some beautiful silk threads that are just gorgeous when you put them on your world pro projects. And if you need a needle threader, I like to use a size 24 chenille needle for the wool. And then as you get into your more specialty threads like these pro cottons, you're going to need a little bit bigger thread. So you can either buy a little package with all of the sizes like this. This goes, has a size 24, 22, um, 20, and 18. And as the number gets higher, then the needle gets smaller. So it's opposite of what you would think. So you may have to use the 18 when you're using some of these larger pearl cotton. Thanks for joining us today for our wool applique demo. All of the products that you've seen us demo here today are available in our shop and also online. We also periodically do a wool applique block of the month. And this is one example here. This is the Potting Bench by Jerome Thomas. And we just love doing wool. So come and join us at the shop and we'd love to help you with your project. Thanks again. See you later. Well, hello there. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more, and if you'd like to support us, just click the like and subscribe button underneath. And if you want to follow us on Facebook or Instagram, all of that information is in our bio. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time for another great video from Cornwack and Quilt Co.